You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing a raw recap from September 25th. Yeah. So this was a uh, solid show overall, I thought. I agree. Yeah. Um, well, there are three things that happened that I didn't think I would ever see. Um, was it Braun uh, destroying? Uh, 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 uh. Let me go through it. Okay. All right. One, Apollo Crews actually got a chant. There were people actually chanting his name. Really? Yes. Interesting. Two. They actually are trying to bring back the Mickey James and Alexa Bliss storyline from SmackDown. I was very surprised. Why? What? That they try to bring it back. What do you mean why they try to bring it back? They... There's only so many women. Eventually well, you gotta yeah, go. Usually they try go to... through something, stop it, and that's the end of it. And you're like, good guess. Yeah, but... the continuity isn't very good. True. Are you suggest? Are you saying that you just didn't think that they would continue a feud and you make they would make it well, seem yeah, like a they, brand new thing? No, no, no. I just didn't expect them to bring something up between the two of them again. All I right. didn't think they were going to make Mickey James, you know, relevant, so to speak. Well, I guess maybe what they try to do is hope that the fans have short attention spans. Oh well, duh. So, um, and three cruiserweights are actually the uh, main event. Main event. Yeah, that. See. That one's got a an asterisk against <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, fair enough. Because a, it wasn't a match. It was just a. They a were talk- in the spotlight. Though. It was a talking segment, yeah. so it doesn't quite count. But because mm-hmm. this was like when um, Miz. No, that Miz and Enzo. No, it was it was when Enzo and Big Cass had the. They oh, figured yeah, yeah. out who. Yeah. That, that was yeah, very good. So. But yeah, that that was bad. This was good. I liked how the, the yeah. show ended. All right, start us off. All right, so uh, the show opened up with uh, The Miz TV Mm -hmm. with Roman as a special guest because of his big match the night before. Yeah. Um, The show actually opened with The Miz's music playing with him and The Miz Taraj already in the ring. Um, And then uh, he introduced Roman, Mm -hmm. and obviously he got booed on the way out. I think it was as bad, though, as it's been. The boos? Yeah. It's hard to tell because I still feel like they tweak with the audio. audio. Because when he was talking about Roman, there was a lot of boos. Mm. And then it sounded like when, as soon as his music hit, it started more. And then it just and then kind of once he, out. Yeah, once he showed up on the screen, they faded out a little bit. And I'm going to assume if you're going to boo Roman, R- Roman, R- Roman, seeing him isn't going to make you want to do it less. Yeah. So. I don't know. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So, um... <laughs> Roman came out, and he was talking about how, well, I guess the Miz said, uh, how do you feel after your match, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, said, you know, John Cena has his respect. Yeah. And, you know, he's kind of humble now, as you put it. Yeah, it was odd, because usually he's, like, with after The Undertaker, he's all arrogant and, and stuff. Right. So the fact but that... But he's good at beating men that are at the tail end of their career. It's true. It's impressive, so actually. That, he beat yep. Triple H, he mm-hmm. beat The Undertaker, and now he beat John Cena. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, it's just funny when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, because way. it's it's absolutely not intentional. No, and it's not like passing the torch because it's not like Roman hasn't been here for it's true. a handful of years. Yeah, it's 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 nothing like the comparison that they keep on drawing between right. him and Cena. Yeah, which so. is fine, but I mean, you you, you shouldn't have to. Spell it out. No, not force even. Force it I down. Mean, they're two different people. It's, it's not going to be the same for everybody. It's true. But they like to, like, they did the thing with Roman that they did with Daniel Bryan. Right. With the authority. No, I know. It's like, it's a, it's a different person. It's got to work. Mm-hmm. It's the same, it's the same concept. Yes. You guys love this once. You're going to love it again. Yep. So, um, anyway, like we said, Roman was very respectful towards John Cena and now he gets it and I think he feels, like, well, I don't know why I'm out here talking to you. Yeah. Because he's like, I did all of this stuff, and I don't understand why I'm wasting my time talking to you. And would he uh, get offended, right? And he started. Oh, the Miz going on lost about it. Why he should be talking? Oh, I'm the champion in the ring. I don't mm-hmm. see you wearing a belt. Yeah, yeah. He he made the IC title relevant right. ever since he came to Raw. And then Roman's uh, trying to put over Jason Jordan, which I think that got a boo, boo as well. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Roman says that 
or what he was saying was that you couldn't you could barely you couldn't beat Jason Jordan on your own. Mm-hmm. And then he said that um he had to use the your lackeys to yeah to win. And then he said something about getting coffee or tell yeah, them to get, get in the bag. Yeah, tell them to get me a coffee. You know what? How about a beer? Yeah. And then you know, cheap pop and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Trying course. anyway. Um. So uh, and then the Miz goes, "Well, you wouldn't have been successful without the Shield." Right. And then Roman's like, "Hold on, hold on, hold on." I that we were we were brothers and stuff like that. We didn't need to use each other. Mm. And um and then the Miz said something about how about or we would beat the Shield any day. Yeah, right. And then Roman goes, "Well, we're uh Dean and Seth are doing their own thing, and I obviously yeah, got my still own friends. thing. So we're not gonna we're I'm not gonna waste their time like right. that." Yeah. He's like, "But the two of us, we can fight right now." Mm-hmm. And then he gets up, and then the Miz goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on!" And I'm then in he a runs suit. Away. Yeah, and then he runs away. Yep. And then Angle comes out, mm-hmm. and then he announces that um, Roman will face the Miz later on tonight in a non-title match. Yes. And coming up next will be Jason Jordan and Matt Hardy versus uh, Curtis Axel Bo and Dallas. Bo Dallas. So we got Jason Jordan and Matt Hardy because Jeff Hardy is injured. And- yes will be out for possibly up to six months is what i've heard uh, it's sad yeah very sad so much for my uh, tlc match yeah i know it would have been so good oh i agree but i guess that's kind of the whole reason they're hyping up the shield yeah i guess so that would kind of make sense yeah so uh we went to commercial break and came back and uh i think that's right we had the curtis axel and bo dallas versus matt hardy and Jason Jordan. There you go. <laughs> I said the JJ, and I was like, Jeff Jarrett's what, not what's, WWE. What's his name? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, yeah, this was a decent match, though. Mm-hmm. It, it's not often that Dallas and Axel actually get to do stuff. No. Usually they just get thrown around mm-hmm. when they're in, involved yeah. with anything. Which Jeff Hardy was ringside. Yes. So he was, But him and The Miz were pretty much non-factors, no, at least no. for most of the yeah. match. Um, at one point, I noticed that i think matt hardy was in the ring maybe getting beat up i don't remember and jason jordan kind of started doing the delete thing with the he did <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> i caught like the tail end of it. i was like no he wasn't doing that because the fans were chanting it and he was kind of getting into it i was like oh this poor guy he's trying he's trying um, um but yeah. yeah they they pretty much dominated the entire match mm-hmm. which was, wasn't a huge surprise well yeah because they're the Mm-hmm. Cer- certainly when you beat up two jobbers it's really not that hard to beat yeah that's why i really kind of hope they don't do the shield versus them um it's it's gonna be if they do do it it's gonna not be as good as it should be because right. if they could do it well they could build up the two of them to yeah. make them more dominant mm-hmm. but at the same time you can't really feel like they're going to right like i, I would be fine if they, you know, put Sheamus and Cesaro and some someone that Roman Reigns was feuding with and mm-hmm. just have a match. Yeah, just like let's say if Joe wasn't hurt, right? Do yeah. that. Oh yeah, absolutely. But you know, I think this was their best option. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, uh, for a short period, uh, Dallas and Axel got uh, got the upper hand. But probably then we had a commercial break. I would assume during yeah. the match. So that's probably what. Oh yeah, yeah, because they were. Because they both got knocked out of the ring before we went to commercial, and then we came back, and uh, the Miz Raj had the upper hand, I believe. Yeah. So somehow, um, the two of them ended up in the corner, and Jason Jordan speared both of them, mm-hmm. and that led to them running out of the corner. One gets a Northern Lights suplex, and the other one gets a twist of fate. Yep. And I guess it was... Uh, oh, no, okay. It was Axel who got the Northern Lights suplex, and Dallas... He got hit the, with the twist of fate, and yep. then Matt pinned him. Yeah. And that was the match. That was it. A very uh, expected outcome of that match, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> there was no uh, no possibility that Miz Raj was going over here. Yeah, so. Uh, but I, I guess they're they're just going to do whatever they can to try and get Jason Jordan over. I guess it's the Matt Hardy's turn. It's true. Um, then we got a uh, recap of the Universal title match, which, yeah. That S- was that. See, like... I get why they do it, but like when you've already seen... If you're seen, watching Raw, you most likely watched. Eh, I would say if you're watching SmackDown, you most likely watched the pay-per-view. 
You think? Yeah. I think I think people who watch SmackDown are more likely to. I guess yeah, because Raw would draw in more of the casual fan. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess that's a fair point. So, um, yeah, and then we had uh, Elias in the ring, mm-hmm. and uh, he was singing a song about Apollo being a loser and basically saying the outcome last night would be the same tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we got Elias versus Apollo Cruz. I still don't like when they do rematches Rematches the night afterwards that have really no bearing on anything yeah no i understand that's just just a short match yeah it's just wasting time yeah um cruz basically had the upper hand most of the match he was showing off his athleticism Mm -hmm. um and like i said earlier he did get a chant they were chanting for him that's weird yeah um so they spilled to the outside and i think uh apollo knocked elias to the ground and uh what did it Apollo and Titus jump into each other, right? They bounced off each other. I, I guess yeah. so. It was some kind of weird. Yeah. And uh, at this point, they both had their attention off Elias. Elias kicked Titus in the back of the leg. Uh, Apollo got distracted. I guess Elias hit him, threw him in the ring, hit the spinning neck bear, uh, the drift away. Yes. And then got the pin for the win. Mm-hmm. And that was that. So, yeah. Um, after the match, right, uh, Elias and Titus were getting into it, but Titus stood up for himself. And, yeah, and but, he very easily overpowered no. him. He's such a big guy. That's true. Um, so I would assume we'll get Titus and uh, Elias next week. I, I guess so. It, it would unfortunately make sense. Yeah, so, whatever. You know, it's something. It it makes more sense for him to be facing lower card people than having him feud with like, oh, like Finn Balor. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, that didn't make any sense because that was his first feud, right? Exactly. Yeah, or his first real one. Yeah, or I guess well, as, yeah, as he close. He was just walking around backstage yeah. for what a couple months. Yeah, as, as close to real as mm. it would be. Yeah. All right. So up next was the the best slash worst promo. Or the sl- best slash worst segment of the night. Mm. <laughs> All right, so uh, Charlie interviews Finn Balor. She says, now that you're done with Bray Wyatt, which is the best news anyone has ever yes. heard. <laughs> um, I was like, wait, this is the best? I yeah. know where you were going with yeah, that. That um, he's like, what's next? So Bray's like, well, I want to thank Bray. Uh, not Bray. Finn. Finn is like, I want to thank Bray for pushing me to my limit. I, I did things in the ring I didn't think I was capable of. Yeah. And stuff like that. Like, what? Yeah. And uh, so he's like, now that now that we're done, I want my universal title back. Yeah. And that was it. And he just walked away. So we have no idea how long Brock's going to be off TV for. It's not true. even a mention of him coming back or anything mm-hmm. like that. Nothing with him. So. Nope. Who knows there? Yeah. And I don't see them building Finn up anytime soon. I don't think, like, Finn can say that he wants to, but I don't think he's going to be the next one to challenge for the title anyway. No. Hell, it could be Cena. Who knows? I know. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but no. it very well could be when he, right. if he comes back around well, the time that Lesnar What are they is. planning on? I think Rumble, maybe? For Cena? Who knows? I don't know. Because I guess he's officially a part-timer now. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Um, it, well, he... Oh, it was later on. Oh, no, it was on Raw Talk the night before. Yeah. Because I think they played a clip of it later on. He's saying that he can't handle doing the... the full schedule and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. like he used to. Did which makes sense. He's the, older. Or listen to the Edge and Christian podcast. I did yet? not listen to it yet, no. Oh, man. Very good. All right, so up next, we had Kurt Hawkins come out mm-hmm. for... Uh, what was he going for? His 119th loss? Yes. Man, good stuff. Uh, I'm... They're making something out of it. It is true. That's all that matters. Yeah, I have no problem with it. It's just funny. Yeah. Um, And then he, what is it? Yeah, he said the uh, the history. uh, No. It's the history machine. Is it? it, No. Yeah, yeah, the history machine. Yeah, because it was the Star Star Factory. Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then (laughs) shortly after he issues his challenge, Ron Strowman comes out. (laughs) And he's like, oh, wait, no. No, and then he <laughs> this just... This is for anybody but you. Yeah, and then he retreats through the crowd. Yeah, and, and then, then... Braun Bra- cuts him off. They get into it, and Braun puts him through a table. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not finished with you yet, basically. Yeah. Brings him on. They go onto the stage, yeah. and... Uh, who is he, power slam him through? He pow- well, I guess as, as much of a power slam yeah. as you can do. Because he was in the position. He just didn't go to the ground. Mm-hmm. He, Instead of slamming him to the ground, he slammed him through the 
the LED screen. board? Yeah. Yeah, underneath the, the Titantron. By where the entrance is. Yeah. It was a cool spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw afterward, there was a picture of Hawkins. His back was nasty looking. I believe it. Yeah. Um, so then Braun goes into the ring, and he basically says what he's on, the path of destruction. Yes. And he wants some real competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Dean comes out. Which was a little surprising. But I'm fine with this because I, I think we're on the same page here in that Strawn losing – Strawn – Strowman losing to Lesnar by one F five kind of made him look a little weak. A little bit. So yeah. I mean, having him beat top names is a little better. It's true. Kind of builds him back up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's not. You don't want him feasting on the lower mid card. Yeah, well, because then you you feel like that's the only people he can beat. Right. Exactly. So. so. But yeah, Dean comes out and he surveys uh, Hawkins's corpse because <laughs> he's just laying there with the referees you talking out. So he looks down. He's like. Eh. And then he he runs yeah. back. He runs down to the ring. Um, good old Dean. Yeah, he's certainly very expressive. Oh yeah, and this is perfect for that. To have. I mean, Sami Zayn did a good job with Braun mm-hmm. when he started that feud. But the only other opponent that would have been perfect would have been Dean for yeah. that role. It's true. Just his selling is is interesting and perfect for a matchup against a much bigger opponent. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So um, at first. Well, we start the match. Yeah. Um, at first, uh, Dean gets pummeled by uh, Bra- uh, Braun, and uh, somehow he slowly but surely claws back into yeah. it. Um, <laughs> Dean goes for a suicide dive. This was a cool spot. Yeah, he picks him up. Uh, uh, Strowman catches him, and then Dean like turns it around and hits him with the DDT onto yeah. the floor, yeah, which was very that. interesting. Yeah. I was not expecting no, that. No, it was cool, and it looked really good. Yeah. Um, so... I guess Strowman almost got counted out, right? Yeah, it was probably like no, a seven or eight. It was, no, it wasn't that no. close. Um, he goes, he finally gets back into the ring. Mm-hmm. Dean goes for an elbow off the top rope because it's the most effective move in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he gets caught and then hits hit with a power slam and then he gets pinned. Yeah. So it was certainly a better match than Kurt Hawkins and Braun Strowman was going to be. That's for sure. Yeah, because that would have been a. Uh... A very, very quick, quick squash. I think uh, when Hawkins had posted that picture, Ellsworth had commented. It was like, now you know the pain I felt when I fought him. <laughs> uh, so up next, we had uh, backstage. Kurt Angle was talking to, I guess, the referee that was going to be in the match for with Miz the Miz and, and Roman. Right? Yeah. yeah. He said, warning him about the Miz Taraj. Mm-hmm. Which... They're crafty. <laughs> yeah. Got the blind referee. So um, then Enzo comes in and you know he's like, oh, I got this cruiserweight belt. I deserve a celebration. And Kurt Angle's like, yeah, the way you won, I don't think you deserve anything. Mm. Um, a win's like, a win. Yeah, he's like, a win's a win. And then he's like, how about you get some advice from an Olympic uh, medalist? And he's like, no, nah, I don't think so. And then he just leaves. <laughs> yep, that that was interesting. Yeah. Um. All right. So uh, there's a back room set. Uh, Back backstage segment with um with Seth yeah, coming up to Dean together, right? yeah. yeah um and then he goes you got to be more careful with your self destructive uh, tendencies so Dean's like you know yeah. you don't you don't need to tell me what to do I can't help myself right and then, um yeah what did you say that oh he says oh you're not gonna need me out there tonight because uh, Cesaro isn't going to be a threat because uh, what did Seth call him the reverse chipmunk? No, nah, Dean's, Dean Dean's like him? he's missing his teeth. It's like the reverse <laughs> chipmunk. And then Dean what called Seth predictable, and he's like, I knew you were going to say that or something. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Then, uh, and then Seth's uh, like, oh yeah, well, oh no, he's like, oh, what are you going to say? You're the King Slayer and this and that. And he's like, you know what? Next week I'm going to ask Kurt Angle, or I'm going to ask Kurt Angle for a match against Braun next week. So yeah, yeah. So why? Who knows? Yeah, whatever. But like you I know. said. They're 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 being better at bridging the gap between pay per views. Yeah, that's really what it is. Yeah, because do we know when TLC is. I know um, the dates flash numerous times. Um, it, that one is probably twentieth like or something. I would assume. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, actually, it's probably the twenty second. Sure. We go with the twenty second. All right. So. Um, so. Uh, but yeah, like like I was saying with bridging the gap between yeah. pay per views. Twenty second. Um, is SummerSlam everything was kind of set up for the next pay per view. Yeah. But they had them over a month to 
to build it. Yeah. So they yeah, I think everything was set up like that next night on Raw. Yeah, so taking their time is certainly better. Yeah, you know. But what are you going to do? It's true. All right, so uh, up next we had Alexa Bliss come out, and she uh, she said she's always seen the, the fans as friends. <laughs> that was a weird statement. Yeah. But. And, uh, and as friends, I feel like I have to be honest mm-hmm. with you. And I'm very disappointed in you. Yep. Because for everything that she had gone through the night before, she doesn't get the respect that she feels like she deserves. Which is funny because she probably gets one of the biggest pops uh, around. Well, they, they're given a script. It doesn't matter what they actually feel like. I know. Truth and WWE writing. They, very they different things. They do not mesh well. No. So yeah, basically she said that she beat all the best of the women's division on Raw mm-hmm. the night before. Yep. And... Uh, so Mickey James comes out, right? Mm-hmm. And then I guess, yeah, Bliss had said something, or she, right, calls her out and says, you know, about the comment she made on Raw Talk the night before. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Bliss says to Mickey that she's like, I think you were in my top eight on MySpace <laughs> and stuff like that. And she says, you know what? You haven't been relevant since MySpace. And, you know, jokes about her being old, mm. which, uh, you know, she's like, she doesn't actually say it, but then Mickey was like, how about you say uh, what you said on Raw Talk last night to my face? And that's when she calls her an old lady, mm-hmm. and then Mickey slaps her. And uh, Well, actually, before that, right, Mickey made a joke about Alexa having a flat chest or oh, yeah. something about a training bra, and she's yeah. like, oh, I see you're still wearing one or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And then she slaps her, and then I think she hits her with the Mick kick. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I guess we're going to get this next, which uh, is fine because... Yeah. We've seen the five women that were in the match on Sunday. And the, it's basically it's, the primary role for the last it's five, been a while. six months. Um, and Mickey James has been more of a like a secondary talent mm-hmm. for the for the last yeah She's for a been while. The veteran so. presence in the in the women's division. Pretty basically. much since she came to Raw. Yeah, I'd say she wasn't really treated no, she's like been. a top talent no handful of matches that's about it yeah and mostly things where she teams with dana brooke and loses yeah <clears throat> and like i had said like before the superstar shakeup had happened they were talking about basically a feud between these two on smackdown mm-hmm. because this was when mickey turned on alexa right i think it was starting to yeah she was she turning, was turning face. face yeah so, so and then they both went to raw and then that was the end of that so they're picking that back up which mm-hmm. like i said earlier on it's good to see. It's true. Um, then we got Sheamus versus Seth. Mm-hmm. This was what we've seen. Yeah, not a past. whole lot new going on here. No. Um, Cesaro was out for the match outside the ring. I yeah. Say, and uh, did you did see? Did not open his mouth once. I was gonna say, did you see the sign that guy was holding up? <laughs> yeah, which on the milk carton. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's missing. Said, yeah, <laughs> his teeth blacked out yeah and it was a picture of cesaro's face and it said missing it was pretty funny all right so we need to talk about what i texted you on monday night Hmm. with so uh, seth wins the match with his uh high knee high knee which still doesn't have a name no and it's not very convincing for a finisher no i I don't know if it's the way he does it or if i don't even i don't think you can really make a knee strike be well you could do something after or before it to make it seem more because it comes out of nowhere yeah so which is obviously beneficial but generally speaking wwe finishers need to be a little more flashy oh absolutely so you need to know that it's coming Mm -hmm. get everybody hyped for it it's like the aa everyone knows it's coming and the rko despite the fact that they keep on suggesting that it's out Out of nowhere nowhere. but well john cena after no mercy needs to find a new finisher. Oh, because uh, he keeps on <laughs> Rowan kept on kicking out Most of it. Most people kick out of it. It's true. In a pay per view match, anyway. Well, his his real finisher should be the shovel, but it should be. Um, the last person probably only kick out of, no, or not kick out of one at a pay per view was Corbin. I would assume before that it probably wasn't many. Yeah, probably not. Because oh, he had that flag match with Rusev. But yeah, but you can't kick out of no, him in a flag match, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, but yeah so they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board here that's true yeah but yeah seth won with that high knee yeah not Um, a surprise here and uh yeah um no real i don't think anything of consequence happened no cesaro stayed out of the way outside the ring yeah surprisingly yeah and uh that was it yeah 
Oh, man. So, yeah, it's stitched. I guess they're going to try and save the teeth. That's what I've heard. Four or five millimeters up into your... That's... That, yeah, I'm sure that yeah, was not oof. fun. No, I can only imagine. So. Um, yeah. So, uh, we got some more Finn. So, mm -hmm. he was walking backstage, and he bumps into Goldust and calls him Goldie. He says, my name's not Goldie, it's Goldust. Even and though then, a week uh, ago, he was going by Dustin. Yeah, because I guess... Balor considered him to be a victim, I guess, Goldust was well, yeah, mad about. Goldust thought that Balor suggesting that he that needed to week, stand right? up for him yeah, that's right. um, made him a victim, mm -hmm. even though Balor was just trying to, I guess, stand up for his friend. Right, which is funny because Booker T made it, uh, had to make a comment saying that oh, Finn Balor's not his friend. This is a whole new locker room. Or Goldust isn't his friend. This is a new locker room and stuff like that. And it's like, what? Well, you got to remember, Booker so, T man. just speaks and doesn't oh, say anything. He was that on makes a it. roll. Like when he <laughs> made the comment about he's uh, the Tozawa. He's like, what has Titus Brand done for Tozawa? And Michael was like, he won the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Booker T. I'm telling you. Should have moved Corey just to SmackDown and put Otunga in his spot. Oh, God. Best commentary team ever. Terrible decision. Just boycott <laughs> Raw from now on. Yeah, yeah. that's why you get a mute button. I guess that's true. So, yeah, basically, uh, uh, Balor apologized for, I guess, inadvertently uh, making him the victim, and then Goldust beats him up. Yep, which is weird. It's yeah. Goldust getting a lot of airtime. Yeah. Strange. Mm -hmm. Whatever. And uh, up next, no, we had that was later on. Hmm. What the match? Yeah, yeah, the match wasn't until later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they did a like a recap of Cena and Roman again with the video package. Yes. And then after that, they did. Uh, it was Roman and the Miz. Yeah. Um, this is more of what I was expecting from Sunday, and I think you were too. That the Miz tries to get more involved, like this match. Mm-hmm. Well, because they kind of, at the end of the Jason Jordan match, was the only time that they did yeah, anything. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at the beginning of the match, before I guess before it got started, The Miz actually offered a hand to Roman. Yeah. And uh, Roman's like, I don't trust you. But then he did it anyway. Yep. And so he starts to walk away, and Roman goes, nah, -uh, and pulls him back in. Mm hmm. And then, yeah. And like we said, The Miz Raj just uh, basically used their numbers for this match yeah they kept on getting involved mm -hmm. here and there even though the ref was warned by kurt angle to watch them yeah what are you gonna do well, yeah. at least they didn't have uh his son be his special enforcer or something like that that is true i could see that happening yeah so um but yeah this match really wasn't anything special it was more after the match that yeah well actually... that was that was really what yeah the, the story was but yeah roman ends up winning with the spear really I know. Don't believe it. I know. Um, so after, the IC champion took a clean, clean pin. It's Roman. I know. He beats everybody. <laughs> um, after the match, uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel attack him. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Reigns is able to overpower them for a short bit. Yep. Um, but then Dallas and Axel come back with chairs, beat the crap out of him. Uh, the Miz hits the skull crushing finale on him after I think they lift him up. Uh, Ro they lift Roman yeah. up. And uh, then they go to leave, and they're like, oh, we're not done. And then yeah. they start beating up with chairs again. Mm -hmm. And then Roman's just uh, left there lying down on the ground. And yep. then and then and after, the, uh, while he's lying down. Goal crushing finale on the chair, right? Yeah. yeah. And then after he's lying down, or while he's lying down, the Miz, uh, Bo Dallas, and Chris actually do the shield thing where they put the their arms, arms together. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Because um, it's not quite that, but... No. So why didn't they do anything? Like, all right, this guy is supposed to be the big thing. You would think people in the locker room would come out and help him. Um, well, well, A, that's not how wrestling works. It's like you need to be involved with someone in order for you, you to jump storyline to storyline. Yeah. It's either it's a this is your place and you know it. It's either a point in time where the whole locker room comes out, or it's you don't get involved unless. Mm -hmm. You have a direct right thing involved in it, so. But yeah, the uh, this kind of would suggest that 
Dean and Seth are going to team up with Roman yeah. to take down the Mistral. I would rather see this as a main event on Raw. Yeah. Leading to something. There, there's no reason for it not to be. Yeah. So, you know, this could this reunion can be a one-off mm-hmm. thing and everyone's making a big deal about it or over right. nothing. So, when did they make it official that next week Miz would be defending the IC title against Roman? I think it was much later on. It was on. later on in the show? Because okay. I don't actually remember yeah, hearing. Yeah, I remember hearing something about yeah. it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so it was probably like right before the Enzo thing at mm. the end. Because yeah. I remember seeing a graphic. Yeah. So up next, we had that Finn Balor versus Goldust match we were talking about earlier on. Yes. Uh, so I guess during the attack backstage that Goldust had done on Finn, mm-hmm. he I guess, dropped him onto like a, some sort of steel rail or something like that. Uh, ribs first. So Goldust worked on his ribs for most of the match, right? Yeah. Um, but eventually Finn overcome, overcame it and won. Yeah, this was surprise. this was not a surprise. No. Um, so after the match, Finn's celebrating in the ring, and then it happens. <sighs> yep. I got the whole world. It's yep. The, yeah, terrible. Why? Why won't they just let it die? Because they're dumb. Who's dumb? The WWE. Okay. Raw writers specifically. <laughs> I don't understand why they have so much faith in Husky Harris. It no, doesn't make any it's sense. It's not even that. It's just the feud went nowhere. It's true. It's not There's... like one of them took it and ran with it. Yeah. That's it's... like the problem. You can't just blame everything on the the writers you know, yeah it's you give true stuff to these guys and they well, let's well, what to what john cena had said during the uh, edge and christian podcast he said nobody's taking anything and running with it yeah it's true um they're all, i mean well the a lot of the problem is with um just the way everything works is that now everyone's like afraid for their job so they want to do exactly what they're told why why would you say that because it's just um there's everything scripted and if you go oh, off okay. script I gotcha. vince is gonna get mad so fair enough the so, unwritten rules yeah so what used to be encouraged in terms of like um i think it was mick foley who was talking about this at one point where um you need to or it's probably austin or something yeah. where it's like you need to take take the bull by the horns otherwise mm-hmm. you're just gonna get left behind right Whereas it's kind of shifted to... You better do what they say, otherwise you're going to get... Yeah. Or you're going to get... put on 205 Live. It, well, <laughs> it, that's that's kind of what it, what it is. Yeah. So I, I think that, that that's kind of more of uh, what it is now. It's just everyone knows that, A, they're going to get paid no matter what. Mm. Um, well, yeah, I think that's why a lot of guys are more willing to be off TV and things like that. Mm-hmm. And just take take what they're, they're given, given instead of coming up mm-hmm. with so that's 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 probably what the actual problem is but there's really no no Except way you can the only thing that would be nice with that is if something isn't working you change it and try something new with somebody else instead of you know doing what they do well you know you can't you can't really change their minds on I things know. <laughs> so but yeah, yeah. not even the fans can it's true they are um, awesome yeah so up next we had a backstage segment with uh bailey and sasha which this was kind of an awkward backstage yeah, segment. Yeah, it was weird because it was kind of trying to plant like seeds of doubt between the two of mm-hmm. them. Yeah, how they, because they each what hit a finisher or whatever on maybe it wasn't they were just getting the pin on Alexa. Yeah, they the went other one took the other one off. So. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, they they kind of like seem like they're upset with each other but then they forget about it yeah, and they're they friends again so eventually something's gonna happen I yeah mean, i don't know what good it's gonna do but yeah i don't know um <laughs> then we had kurt angle with enzo again in the back yeah enzo yeah. comes up to him and kurt angle goes what do you want you're <laughs> really annoying <laughs> yeah and apparently enzo want requests a no contact clause mm-hmm. so that no other cruiserweight can attack him and if they do they will lose a shot at the cruiserweight championship yeah now is that they lose it entirely or just while he's the title holder because that's what it made made it seem. um i'm gonna assume while he is the title holder that's what i figured um but well because i don't think that you can really do that no i know 
Well, obviously, you can technically never really do it, sure. but um, yeah. But yeah. So uh, um, after that, this was promoted earlier on the show. Yeah, maybe, they, they maybe had made an bit. announcement. Yeah. So we got Nia Jax and Emma versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. So it was basically the same match two weeks ago, except uh, was Emma in the spot of or no, no Bailey instead in of, of Alexa. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For when they were determining the one contender. No. No, it was whether or not it was going to be a fatal four way match instead of the one on one between. I like how big of a deal it was making it a fatal four way from a singles match, mm-hmm. and then it was no problem adding the fifth, fifth person. One. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this wasn't anything special. Hmm. Um, Sasha and Bailey double teamed Naya, or would they push her into, or one of them pushed they, her into I think the they... ring post, right outside the ring? Oh but yeah. They, yeah, yeah. It was. I think Bailey pushed her into the ring post, and then Sasha jumped on her, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and then that allowed them to take down Emma. Emma. She mm-hmm. gets hit with the Bailey to belly, and she gets pinned. That was that, and that is all she wrote. Yeah. So secondary woman storylines are pretty much non-existent. It's true, because they're just throwing in matches. Yep. And that's what we're going to see. It's true. So uh, up next, we had Enzo's title celebration. Mm-hmm. So uh, this wasn't a bad segment. I, I Not, liked what they were doing. Yeah. It, like, at first, I was like, oh, this is going to be crap. And I then, agree. And then it started happening, and I was like, oh, you know what? You got my attention. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Tell me more. So apparently, well, I don't, I, the <laughs> beginning of it was weird. Yeah. Because he was going on about how he woke up next to a beautiful woman, which was the title. Um, and then he was going on, and then he had a he had like a a picture frame in the it was ring, a jersey, yeah. and it was a jersey that I don't I don't know where that was from, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So. <laughs> All of a well, sudden, the, the, the 205 Live music plays, and he's like, what is that terrible music? <laughs> Which is really funny. Yeah. And Corey Grace is like, you know, if you watch the show you're on every so often, maybe you would know what, what the music's like. Yeah. Man, move from Corey from that show is... Not good. No, and I ain't got nothing against Nigel, but he's not the same. I, I don't like Nigel. <laughs> it's terrible. You're entitled to that opinion. It's true. Um, so... Uh, so the the entirety of the cruiserweight division mm-hmm. comes out less Neville. Neville, possibly other people, but I think it was everybody. At, at the least, it was most of them. Yeah. Um. So they're all staring him down, mm-hmm. and then Enzo's like, "You guys can't touch me. What are you gonna do about yeah. it?" And then he went one by one for at least a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he went in front of Swan. Yes. Uh, Grand Medley, calling him fat. He's not too, can't be two hundred and five pounds. Yeah. And then what do you make fun of Jack Gallagher too? Well, Which he, he called him Teacup Boy. I thought he was talking about TJP. To be that's honest. what I thought he was. Because TJP was just kind of like ignoring him, looking at whoever yeah. he was standing next to. And yeah. I was like, what's he talking about? And then they zoomed in on Gallagher, and I was like, oh okay. Yeah. And then a little while in, or a little while after, and he gets cut off by Neville's music. Um, Neville comes out. Very much like the first time he oh, lost the title. So good. He looked like a zombie, yeah, which yeah. is actually really cool. Oh my God, he's so good. Um, and then he... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he starts yelling at Enzo, saying he's a disgrace. and You were dropped on our doorsteps, and yep. these guys wanted to give you a chance. Yep. So. And you disgraced the whole division. Mm-hmm. And that he's no longer wanted. Mm-hmm. Then he starts walking towards the ring, and Enzo goes, "Ho, ho, ho! Hold on! You can't touch me! I have this piece of paper." Mm-hmm. And then Neville like looks at it, and he goes, "You can't put a hand on me," Enzo right. says. And then so Neville turns around and kicks him right in the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> then he took the piece of paper and jammed it in his mouth, right, and then he hit him with the red arrow. Yep. Um, and that's how we ended the show. However, did you see what happened after the show went off the air? No. Braun Strowman came back out. And he beat and he up Enzo? Enzo, yeah, with a running power slam. And, uh, well, didn't... Was this on the show or after when... Oh, wait, this uh, Enzo got out of the ring and started going up the ramp. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had, okay, so that yeah. was during the show. Okay, this was when, <clears throat> when Neville came out. Yeah, that's right. When he came, when started going to the ring, Enzo ducked out of the ring, yeah. and then he ran to up up the up Entrance, the ramp, and yeah. then the, the rest of the cruiserweights wouldn't let him leave. Yeah. 
So anyway, so Braun came out and he hit him with the running power slam and everything. That's and really got funny. Got out of the ring and said, if you guys want him, he's yours. So they all get in the ring and everybody's hitting their finisher on him. Really? And so everybody wants Mustafa Ali to go up to the top. So then Drew Gulak comes over and goes, no fly zone, buddy. <laughs> so everybody, uh, all the cruiser is like, come on, one time, one time. And then they got the yes chant going and everything like that. And then Mustafa Ali hit the 450, inverted 450. And I think that was... Oh, no, Cedric hit the, uh, the lumbar check. Tony Knee hit the running knee. Uh, Grand Metalik and... Uh, what's the other luchador? Oh, um... Grand Metal League and Lince Dorado. There you go. They both hit a super kick on him together. It was pretty good. It was pretty funny, He looked actually. dead behind the eyes, and uh, <laughs> when he saw him in the corner after getting that knee from Tony Nese. Yeah, I would, uh, I would imagine so. so. That's really good, actually. Yeah, yeah. It was a good segment. Awesome. And like I said, oh, I've said it time and again, I enjoy 205 a lot. I know you do as well. Yeah. Um, it's just that, I don't know. I, I think they're... I think they're using Enzo as like a well a it's to get more attention mm -hmm. and since they're doing this okay everybody hates him angle they're going to turn him into like an easy character to to like right. want to root against. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that was another thing that came up when Enzo said, you know, I sell merchandise all the time. My, my merchandise sales are better than all of yours combined to the cruiserweights. Mhm. Mm and uh, why would you make him into the bad guy if you want to, sell, you know, utilize him to sell I don't think, merchandise? See, that's the thing. They they think it's not going to matter because he's not really the bad guy. He, he's just he's just yes. a jerk. Yeah, and you can do that because they've always done it. Yeah. So I think there's there's a difference between it's the cocky jerk. Yeah, yeah right. a good guy, a bad guy, and then a, a jerk because the. A bad guy tries to go out of his way to do bad things. Yeah. The Ill illogical mm -hmm. wrestling bad guy that makes no sense will go out of his way, even if it hurts himself, to do what's wrong. No, that makes sense. Whereas a, a, a logical person, you know, the jerk, right. will do whatever he needs to get what he wants. Fair and enough. then the stupid baby face will just do dumb things no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, that was... I, I like where they're going with yeah, this. Yeah, no, I thought it was a, a good way to end the show because mm -hmm. uh, you're able to do it without using top talent. It's true. And that's that's nice to see. Mm -hmm. Especially with Brock Lesnar not being around. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. So this was our raw review. If you like what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.